Hey everybody, thanks for checking us on out. Tobin here with you and uh, appreciate you guys checking out the channel uh, in the wee hours of a Tuesday morning here, about a week out from Miami Heat training camp, depending on what you to consider the start of camp. If you consider media day, the start of camp, that's less than a, that's less than a week away. That was a week from yesterday, but uh, this is when the, uh, the boys will be over at uh, FAU and uh, getting training camp underway officially. So I think like this is the official official day. Although I think with you know if we're going Dame deadline, um, most people want it done by media day because obviously you get asked a lot of questions, huh? So that is uh, that is why I guess everybody's kind of got this week circled. I will say, listen, I, I feel a fool. You know, I feel I feel like a big mouth bass, like. A- <laughs> You know, like hook, line, and sinker on last week, where I was like, "Oh man, this seems like it's actually coming to uh, to an end." And then, like Friday, it was just like, "Nah, I don't even know if the Heat want him." I was just, "Jesus, all right." I mean, like you want to talk about a complete uh, one eighty on where we were on Thursday night compared to Friday, when everybody was just taking a big poop on the Heat's interest and availability, and uh, and then this today it was uh, it was Raptors Day. Um, we were just taking a taking taking it for a spin. I think everybody was taking it for a spin. What, what, what does Dame on the Raptors feel like? You know, let's take this for a spin here today. What does this What does this feel like? I really, I am at a uh, at a at a point. I've been this. I'm pot committed this much, so I will continue to, you know, have feelings about everything that is out there. But this one was uh, hilarious to me because it was interesting for a couple of reasons. So this report comes out from mark spears and as we know mark very tied in with damian lillard very tight with damian lillard but um had a report today that he uh that he described after speaking with some executives that the raptors are thought of as the current front runner for damian lillard um so in his deets on his article he said uh the Toronto Raptors ended this week as the front runner to the Portland Trailblazers to trade for Damian Lillard, according to two high-ranking NBA team executives. While the Raptors have had recent conversations with the Blazers about Lillard, no pact was close to being imminent as of Monday morning, according to a source. All right, so they're the front runners, but no deals imminent. All right. Um been nearly three months since the trade became public and according to Damian Lillard so his preferred destination was the Miami Heat in the nearly three months since the requested trade became public no substantial trade conversations have taken place between the two team sources said the Heat offered a trade package that included sharpshooter Tyler Hero and two first round picks a source said okay well that's interesting for a couple of things because it is the first reported I think actual stuff that we have from a very credible guy in Mark Spears about what the Heat have offered. Now, I don't think that he says included. I don't think that's everything that they probably included. I'd imagine they probably would have had, you know, they have to match the salary. So I guess you could put you put Duncan in there. And then um, you'd imagine probably Jovic or Hakez, I if I had to guess. But, like, let, that's the big names of the deal would be Tyler Hero and two first-round picks. Okay. So this is where he goes off on this. And it says uh, the Raptors could offer a package featuring a player from their roster, which include Pascal Siakam, uh, 2002 NBA rookie of the year, Scotty Barnes, OG Ananobi, who's eligible for a contract extension and rookie sharpshooter, Grady Dick. The Blazers are intrigued about adding a young six, eight sharpshooter, uh, according to a source. Okay. Um, so, we now have a young guy that they're interested in. This is according to them. It's it's uh, Grady Dick, one of the picks this year in the uh, in the draft. We've also heard, you know, that the front office does love Jaime Hawkins. I don't know if that's a wash. You do with that what you will. We also know that uh, Jaime seems like he's gotten himself very cozy down here in Miami. So who knows? The report also says, that along with Toronto, Miami, the Bucks, Celtics, 76ers, and Bulls have shown interest in Lillard's initial trade request. Um Regardless of whether Lillard is traded or still in Portland come media day, a source says he is not expected to be uh, a media day or training camp holdout. So, okay, that's interesting. 
um, that he's going to go. But we did hear this. This is the thing that's interesting with, the, with, with Toronto. Okay, so Toronto, here are the things that are interesting about Toronto. Toronto does have talent. There's no doubt about that. I won't deny that. T- Toronto, OG Ananobi is a player that, like, kind of everybody likes. Nobody loves. You know, he's 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 uber talented, great two way player. Has kind of wanted to flourish in his own role and his own thing. Probably out of Toronto, I think a lot of those guys have being away from Nick Nurse, Pascal Siakam. You know, champion, all star. Um, you know, tremendous. Would they trade him for Dame? I feel like that makes no sense whatsoever. I feel like if you were to have Pascal Siakam, that's kind of your two headed snake right there in Toronto. It's also kind of an odd deal because. What does Toronto sending away their talent with where they were last year adding Dame? Where does that put them? You know what I mean? Like that's a that's a strange. You know, props to the Masai Ujiri move of Kawhi Leonard when they did Kawhi Leonard. But I think a lot of people would say, well, you upgraded basically a really great roster, and all you gave up was Demar Derozan. You went from Demar Derozan to Kawhi Leonard, and you had the rest of the roster pretty set. Is this roster really, and that was a, mind you, that was a a Raptors team that was basically number one in the Eastern Conference every single year and just got, kept getting ousted by LeBron James. Um, So I just think that's a much different situation with this Raptors team that, you know, is fine. They're fine. And I think a lot of their ceiling probably goes about on what the ceiling is of Scotty Barnes. Would they actually give up Scotty Barnes for him? You know, I think... What is? I mean, you look at his prototype body, what he could be. Um, probably fell a little flat of expectations of where the astronomical expectations were last year for him. But I think you think about where he is at his career. I mean, still, you get a guy with that kind of body. Um, everyone's gonna bet on that, especially with what he he showed his rookie year. Um, and then add an Obi again, a player that everybody likes, but also you got to give a contract extension to. Um, and it, it, it kind of throws to like the Tyler Hero thing. If they're not interested in giving money to Tyler Hero, you might have to pay OG Ananobi about that or probably more. So that's an interesting thing, too. Um, I don't know, man. It, it's just one of those things where I don't feel like Toronto makes a whole lot of sense making the Dame trade. And then you have reports out of Toronto today. And this comes from Josh Lewenberg who covers the Raptors. And uh, this is uh, what he said. He said uh, there are, he says, when Kevin Durant decided to hold, uh, he had enough of the sideshow in Brooklyn last summer. Ujiri and the Raptors were in the mix. They kicked the tires on Rudy Gobert, Domino Mitchell, before Utah sent them to Minnesota and Cleveland, respectively, though those discussions never got past the preliminary stage. They checked in on Bradley Beal. Though his no-trade clause complicated things, and like Durant, he ultimately forced his way to Phoenix. This is a front office that isn't afraid to go big game hunting, but one that's still waiting for the right catch. Might Lillard be? Uh, might that be Lillard, the NBA's latest disgruntled star? As multiple sources confirmed to TSN, the Raptors' interest in Portland's all-star guard is real, albeit, quote, a bit overstated at this point. Uh, the Trailblazers have been operating with minimal minimal leverage since Lillard and his representatives went public with their trade demand um, of preferred destinations, which is limited to one team, Miami, with the starting training camp fast approaching. The sudden uptick in teams reportedly registering interest could simply be the result of Portland feeling the heat, no pun intended, of trying to get some leverage back, as one source suggested. I think the thing that's always it, that's that's really from this point. So, again. It felt very much like the heat momentum was going towards the end of last weekend, and then you just had like a full opposite press with, oh, we haven't even talked to Miami. I don't even know how if Miami even really wants Damian Lillard. Are they desperate for Damian Lillard? Freaking out the Heat fans, yours truly included. I was like, man, I mean, what do you mean you're not? De- you're not like, how are they not getting a hold of the Blazers? And then you're just like, man, the Blazers are really trying to do a number. And honestly, look, Joe Cronin said this. In the last time he spoke to the media, where he goes, like, ideally in negotiations, you'd like the list to be longer than one team. Could they still screw over Damian Lillard and go against his wishes and just trade him wherever? Maybe. Who could rule it out? I mean, could they just be the ultimate petty for it? Um, It hasn't been the case. You go to that Kevin Durant case. You know, he had his preferred teams, Phoenix, Miami, but mostly Phoenix. 
and Toronto was maybe going to be in the mix. They didn't, apparently. I think the reports were didn't want to give up Scotty Barnes for him back then. That was for Durant. Um, and so you look at this whole scenario, like, yeah, this kind of does feel like, okay, they are the flavor team because they got a guy like Ananobi who, yeah, I guess you could say, look at Tyler Hero and say, well, he's a better two-way player. Um, is he a more important championship piece? Maybe, okay, I get why everybody wants awesome wing defenders who can average over 20 points. The guy's a good player. Um, you know, older, you know, he's not He's not Tyler's age. He's, uh, what is, OG is 26 years old. So, you know, still got plenty of good years left. Uh, just turned 26 years old. And, uh, and certainly has been looking for the opportunity to, I think, provide even more for, for some teams. But it is, uh, you know, it's just, it does seem like a, a bit odd that Toronto would make a swing like this when it doesn't feel like with what they would have to give up, they'd be close. I think the thing that always has been frustrating, probably from the Blazer standpoint with Miami and and why Damian Lillard picked them is because he just seems, first of all, he loves Bam. Uh, and he just feels like a perfect fit next to those two guys, even with what they would probably have to give up to get him. And you can say that because they've been to back-to-back Eastern Conference championships. They've been to an NBA Finals. And you'd basically be upgrading from Gabe Vincent, who everybody all of a sudden is thinking is Magic Johnson. And I, I say that loving Gabe Vincent, by the way. And you'd, up, you'd replace him with Damian Mother Bleeping Lillard. Um which would feel very similar to the Toronto Raptors upgrading from, and probably from, you know, DeMar DeRozan to Kawhi Leonard when they were the perennial one seed in the Eastern Conference that always got ousted by LeBron. With the Raptors doing this with Dame, you know, what does that, does that make them the fourth best team in the Eastern Conference? Do they feel like that they get in and a team that has, you know, if they keep Scotty Barnes, I mean, if he hits these crescendos that they're hoping for, maybe. But you know, I think that's uh, I think there's still a lot of uh, a lot of stuff unsettled there. There's a, you know, and and then you have, of course, I think it was um, you remember you had that report from Shams report. Take it loosely. He had that speculation uh, on his uh, on on Bally Sports probably like two, three weeks ago where he was like, well, Dame's only going to get uh, only report to two camps, either Miami or Portland. So if like Toronto tries to trade for him, theoretically, uh, that could be an issue. Um, you know, so that's, uh, that's going to be, any, it, I don't know. I, I just, I, I think that this, it, it all just feels a little bit too good to be true, but listen, I could be sitting here on Wednesday and he's a Toronto Raptor and I'm going to be sad. Um, the other piece of interesting news here, according to uh, to this, so we talked about this a little bit earlier, Tyler Hero and two first-round picks. That was the first piece of uh, trade fodder that's really been out there from Miami sides that, that that's leaked. And yeah, I would buy that. I would say Tyler Hero just uh, was an offer that's probably out there. Maybe the Heat are trying to use Tyler Hero, flip it for another pick, and then the young guys, we'll see. Um But there was a little piece of, I guess, social media drama, you could call it. I don't know. Could have just been fat thumbs. But Tyler Hero, you know, NBA Central, they put everything out there. So NBA Central put out the tweet of this, and Tyler Hero liked it, that the Heat had offered him in two first-round picks. And once it started rustling around Twitter that it was there, he unliked it and it was no longer there. So was it a fat thumb situation? We know Tyler Hero puts a lot of, uh, you know, does a lot of cryptic social media stuff, does, you know, keep the records of people who doubt him, people who hate on him, all that type of stuff. Um, Look, we still don't have an answer for what the whole cap tweet was about a couple of weeks ago. And then you had the report going into the weekend that did say a lot of teams were interested in him. I think Ethan reported that what the jazz would offer a pick and a player for him. There was reports that I think Chicago, Charlotte, Brooklyn, and Utah were all interested in Tyler hero. So he's not a player with no value, which kind of goes back to the whole thing of like Portland's lack of interest in him being a bit odd. Um, 
fit notwithstanding. I just think that, you know, you collect good players, you collect assets. So, but it, it does bear a little bit of interest because it has felt very much like things have smoothed over. You know, from the outside looking in, I think people looked at it and saw, ah, you know, things with the Heat and Tyler Hero, maybe frosty early on in the year, changing the Twitter bio and all that. And now in a better spot, it seemed, you know, working out with the coaches, playing against teammates in pro league, maybe that, but now we're a week out, less than a week from media day, a week out from camp. And, uh, the feathers briefly were ruffled there on social media. It would appear again. It also, who hasn't accidentally liked something? You, you get look at these look at these fat thumbs. Look at these fat. Look at this fat everything. You, you you make a mistake on Twitter with fat thumbs every now and then. So possible that that could have just happened with Tyler. A little slip of the old thumb after uh, you know getting a, a Twitter notification or getting tagged in it a bunch. But um, it is interesting, man. It is uh, it is. It is an interesting thing. TSN said, uh, if the Heat or any other team had hoped to slow play the negotiation super than anything less than their best offer, they might want to think twice, or at least that's what the Blazers are hoping for. Whether the Raptors are the front runners, the Dark Horses are contenders in the Lillard Sweet Stakes is a moot point. Take all three of these distinctions and a myriad of teams that will be mentioned from now uh, with a grain of salt. But yes, the Raptors like Lillard. They have for some time. The previous regime had the Weber State product ranked just below Anthony Davis atop their draft board in 2012. Um, a season in which Brian Colangelo admittedly tried to tank. So he is, uh, look, he's really good. I would understand why anybody would want him, but it's very clear. There's been a couple of things where it's like Toronto has kind of been the place where like, don't send me to Toronto um, amongst others. Like he wants to come to Miami. That's been known, but like Toronto feels like the real place he doesn't want to go. And I think they probably would be a little bit like shook of oh, what if he comes here and he does ask for, as Barry reported, trade me to Miami, get me to where I want to go. Be interesting, man. Be interesting. But um, I don't know. It feels like there has definitely been a lot more noise, but I don't know where we are as far as anything being substantive at this point, because it does feel like we're kind of going in circles and chasing our tail on this thing.